so I did actually kick it and it's not a hand grenade <laughs> thank goodness <laughs> Welcome back, beautiful adventurer. I'm Shailen Fair, and this is our journey to Eden's new vlog style series, and I've titled it The Whole Hearted Woman. It goes alongside this journal planner in which each month I encourage you with a whole hearted woman theme, as well as there's some organizational tools in here like habit trackers, uh, writing down your goals and dreams, financial trackers. And my intention behind this from my heart to yours is to walk alongside you this year as a source of encouragement and providing some practical inspiration and tools for your beautiful path journey. And I'm going to be very vulnerable here on this vlog and talk about the different things that I've learned and ways that I have had to move from a childish way of thinking and being in this world and to mature into what it means to be a wholehearted woman and to discover that, to embody it. And that does come down to looking at certain themes on how to renew and to grow internally. So one of the main things that I really have struggled with in various different occasions in my life is trying to control the outcome of situations. And I have come to the realization that we simply cannot control the outcome, even if we try to act our best, to be our best, or have the best intentions within our circumstances. We just simply can't control things on our external locus of control. So we can't control how people are going to react or um, how circumstances are going to turn out. But the good thing is that although circumstances may not change, we can change within those circumstances. And there's a couple of texts that I want to read to you. But first, I really, really love the story of Joseph. And one of the main influences of the story of Joseph, which you'll find in the Old Testament in the Bible, is that he really does, his journey really does teach us that although we may not have the control of the circumstances we are in, although we may try to act our best and most honorable in circumstances, it doesn't always mean that we will have the best outcome right then and there. So if you don't know the story of Joseph, it's a beautiful story about a young man who is betrayed by his family, by his brothers, he's sold into slavery, and then he gets bought by one of the main leaders in Egypt. This is Potiphar. He works in Potiphar's house as a slave. And because he's so honorable and his character is so right, and he takes responsibility for himself in the circumstances he finds himself in, he rises up to be one of Potiphar's main head servants. And he's well respected and loved by Potiphar. But Potiphar's wife has her eye on Joseph and she tries to seduce him. Joseph does the right thing. He says, no, he will not dishonor God and he does not want to dishonor his master, who is Potiphar. And so he basically runs away from her and he resists the temptation, which you would think everything would go beautifully for Joseph after that, because after all, he did honor God. He did the right thing. But sadly, it all goes horribly wrong, even more. He gets thrown into prison by Potiphar and he ends up in prison for years. But Joseph, being who he is, taking responsibility for himself, acting with good character, Joseph rises up in the ranks of the prison and he becomes a leader in the prison. Joseph eventually does rise to great power, but it's a long and painful journey of him doing the right thing and then being thrown into circumstances completely out of his control and finding himself in places like a prison, which he clearly does not want to be in. 
But what we can learn from his story is that what we can do in our circumstances, although they may not be the outcomes that we have hoped for, is we can become the best version of ourselves and use the power of our choice in those circumstances. So Dr. Dr. Edith Egger, which is one of my favorite concentration camp survivors who have who authors from the concentration camp she became a psychiatrist and she's written a couple of really beautiful books one of my favorite books of hers is called the choice and she talks about how we can make prisons in our own mind but we can break out of them by the power of our choice and so what i have really learned from Letting go of trying to control the outcomes of circumstances is to rather focus on my internal locus of control is who do I want to become in the circumstance? How do I want to behave with the set of circumstances that I find myself in, even if they're undesirable? And can I continue to hope, trust and endure with my faith? through the circumstances. There is an orthodox teacher, which I absolutely love. His name is he's Anthony Bloom and his metropolitan Anthony Bloom and his writings and teachings have been really encouraging and helpful to me. And something I read recently, which I think you might find encouraging as well, is about learning to see things objectively. And I know being a melancholic temperament, You can check the link below in the description about what a melancholic temperament is, and you can click on the card above as well. But being a melancholic means that sometimes we can just be very subjective because we can be so caught up in our emotions. Our emotional world is heightened. It's very real. We can be hypersensitive, which can sometimes lead to, frankly, self-centeredness and being subjective about all circumstances going on around us. But to combat this and something melancholics need to learn is to become objective, objective about your role in circumstances, in relationships, and just of yourself in general. And in his book, Meditations on a Theme, Anthony Bloom writes this. It is in a similar way that we must learn to see one another, to be far enough to distance ourselves sufficiently to be free from irrational, self-centered reactions, from prejudice, from all those errors of judgment which come with emotional entanglement, yet near enough to feel related, responsible, committed. This will require an effort of will and genuinely denying of self. It is easy to relate harmoniously to a statue. It is much more odious to distance ourselves from a person we love or to come close to someone who is repellent to us. To do this, to conquer both fear and greed, we must disengage ourselves from our egotism and learn to see all things as though we were at the center of the universe. We must learn to see things in an objective manner, as facts, which we can take in and investigate without asking first, how does this person or this circumstance affect me, my well-being, my security, my very existence? To be dispassionate, as to be able to see through appearances despite material evidence. He goes on, it's a great book. I won't go any further with that, but I just love what he said about becoming objective, to not always become so self-involved that uh, we get caught up in how our circumstances are turning out, that we forget that the universe is a much bigger place than our little experience. And... God's plan is much bigger than we can imagine. But saying that, I'm not, it's not to crush your emotional experience of a circumstance, but I do find that once we learn to let go of trying to manipulate or control outcomes and rather to put that mental energy and prayer into choosing How do we want to be in the circumstance? And that comes to my last point on this subject for today is acceptance. There is a beautiful little poem by Amy Carmichael. It is one of my favorite. And one of the lines in there is, in acceptance lieth peace. And I have found this genuinely for my own life. In surrender and acceptance before God and in my life, 
it has helped my internal world to relax and to leave the outcome to God. And on the topic of acceptance, I want to read to you from John Sparks' book, Insights from the Bible. And he's based this little excerpt from the scripture in 1 Corinthians 7, 17, that says, Nevertheless, each person should live as a believer in whatever situation the Lord has assigned to them, just as God has called them. He goes on to say, Do you ever find yourself wishing you were somewhere else, doing something else, possibly even being someone else? If only this were different or that had happened, then I would be happy and content and all would be well. Well, would it? How do you like the idea of being a slave, no rights, owned by your master and totally at his command? Not the best lot in life, huh? What does Paul say? Well, he says, were were you a slave when you were called? Don't let it trouble you, 1 Corinthians 7. Hang on, Paul. Slavery is a terrible thing and clearly should be abolished and you are saying not to let it trouble you? Yes, he is saying that because there is something that is even more important than your lot in life and that is how you live within that lot. Note that Paul says, each person should live as a believer in whatever situation. Perhaps we have got this so wrong the other way around. Instead of, if only this or that, would we not be better to concentrate on what we can do something about? That is the way way we live within that context. Your family situation might fall far short of your hopes and dreams. There might be severe pressures from the way your children have chosen to live. Your family could be experiencing physical or mental health issues. You might be on your own, struggling with being single or alone after bereavement. Maybe your job is a daily challenge. Perhaps our focus should be on discovering what it means to live as a believer in that situation. That is what glorifies God and stretches us into the glory of being human. There is more. Paul transforms our lot into our calling. Our verse reminds us that the situation that the Lord has assigned to us becomes our calling, just as God has called them, it says. We can see our present situation as God's calling. It is where he has put us and we can put our energies into living in a way that honors God just where we are. Even if our circumstances never change, this holds true. Even if our present circumstances are a result of our own folly or wrongdoing, because God is never caught out. It isn't wrong to want to change our situation. Paul says in 1 Corinthians, if you can gain your freedom, do so. Have you noticed how in those times when we have accepted God's purposes for us in our situation and relaxed into them, it is often at that point that something changes. God wants us to concentrate on what we can do and let him get on with what only he can do. So in regards to letting go of outcomes, I hope that you can be encouraged to choose to live as a believer within the circumstances you're in, accept it as your current lot and allow the outcome to God. So let's move on into our little mini adventure for the month where we go to Highcliffe. So today is an adventurous little, today is a mini adventure day and uh, we'll get things sorted for the new month but first we are going to go visit with a friend who has started a um, a business which is to do with I think it's a social enterprise perhaps it's not a social enterprise it might be something else we'll find out from her Um, so we're gonna go to a coffee shop and I'm going to help her with just some advice on her social media strategy and marketing. Just a quick little interruption. If you've liked this content so far, remember to subscribe and like, and I'd love you to leave a comment below on what you thought about the theme of acceptance and letting go of outcomes. I would love to know your experiences. Okay, back to the video.
So today's mini adventure for this month, we are off to Highcliffe. So we'll explore Highcliffe Castle, a bit of the forest there, and maybe visit some charity shops. So what a great way to end 2023 with mother who doesn't want to be on camera, but she is there sitting next to me. <laughs> There is a podcast I'll have to link um, in the description below. It was a series about following these people who had been through some traumatic events and how they um, all went into nature for a couple of days and they did different brain scans um, before and after going into nature and I think it takes about 30 minutes of walking amongst trees and it starts to change your brain waves and kind of your emotional state so it just shows how connected we are to nature and it's definitely something that helps me as particularly a very large melancholic temperament to be in nature often and uh, I grew up in South Africa running around barefoot always in nature and so here in England I've got to make just that little extra bit of effort to get out into the cold dress wrap up warm get amongst the trees or by the ocean or by the water and it really does um, help help my emotional and mental state so yeah do give yourself a gift in the new year and get into nature as often as you can. Isn't that right, mum, being in nature? That's right. They also say that what the eye sees through nature, all the different shapes, etc., does actually affect your brain, the brain waves or brain pattern. And it's very, very healing. Yes, actually, I saw something the other day where it talks about there's a specific shape you can only find in nature. I'll, I'll, yes. also, I'll link it here. It's I'll not put a, a little. Man-made shape. Yeah, it's not a man-made shape. And all it's of the nature fierce. shapes are very, very. It's healing. To yeah. Us. Well, we're created from nature. We are a part of nature, yes. so we mustn't disconnect ourselves from it and be too connected to. Digi the digital world we've got to make sure that we keep ourselves in balance and mm. to walk on the wild and beautiful and path yeah so let's stay away from the industrial world so the object below has been inspected and is believed to be linked to communications during world war ii and here it is and that <laughs> i did kick it so thank goodness it's um <laughs> So I did actually kick it, and it's not a hand grenade, <laughs> thank goodness. But we're actually going to cut our walk a bit short because we're cold. I've chosen five outfits for January, which I'll wear in rotation. Most of these items are from charity shops, and I normally try to look for high quality materials. So I'm wearing a lot of silks here, and ca uh, cashmere, and wools. And I'm just going to repeat wearing the same shoes, the same leggings. And what I do when I'm wearing the skirts is I like to tuck the hem into the top of the skirt just to show that I've got a bit of a waist. And what I love about these outfits is that they're so easy to move in. It's just wearing a couple of items of clothes, but because of the high quality materials, I'm kept warm. So I'm really happy with these fairy tale esque outfits for the dark cold month of January. My two jean options. I have got only a couple of pair of jeans. They're both from and other stories, which they've lasted me for absolute ever. And I only wash them every one or two weeks. Um, so I'll just be wearing these. I'm wearing a different pair of boots, which I can go stomping in these. And two charity shop jumpers. One is a wool blend and just a polo neck underneath. And I love to pair all of this with my little gold belt and gold earrings. So I do like to use a larger planner 
for the month and keep this on my desk and I'll put out um, specific things that need to be focused on that month as well as block out my days. I tend to do this, I use Notion and I use Google Calendars, but I love to have things visually right in front of me each day so I can see what the week holds and if I'm tracking anything specific. So let's dive into the Wholehearted Women Life Planner. As you can see on the first page, I've just written you a little bit of a note there for the year. And on the first page, we have got self-care ideas and I've put a couple of things in here which I would like to accomplish this year um, and they're just forms of inspiration for you and if you want to put your own you can put your own on there so I am going to fill this out These are different things that I'm going to do for self-care this week. Nature. And once you've done your designing your own self-care, ideas here then you can put in your morning routine and your evening routine so i i do know what my morning routine is and i'll continue doing that until i decide to change it up and that is simply waking in the morning having a big glass of water brushing my teeth doing a skincare routine and then it's exactly the same for the evening so i like to keep it really short and simple Water, teeth, skin. And then I like to have my meditation prayer time, which is really important for me in the mornings. My evening routine, you can fill out yours. And that will be uh, also very simple for me, but I normally um, do my bath and my um, nighttime skincare routine. Water again. And then this specifically, no phone after 9 p.m. So I'm gonna be putting my phone away after 9 p.m. every night because I really want to have a complete detox from my phone between nine and nine. So coming to wholehearted practices, this is based on what would you like to practice this year? Would you like to read a certain amount of books? Would you like to have a weekly routine where you um, go into your favorite coffee shop and read? Um, is running part of um, one of your practices? Maybe going to church would be part of a practice seeing a friend once a week so you can fill out that and it's connected here with the reading list so if part of your wholehearted practice is to make sure you're reading a book once a week in a coffee shop or um, when, when you're out and about to have your book with you you can put your reading list in here and for me I've got my reading list digitally and I will put it in here but I'm not gonna do it now and make you watch me do it so I'm gonna put that in later so we've got setting intentions. What is your big starry goal for 2024? One of your main things you would like to accomplish, whether it's growing your YouTube channel, whether it is making a new friend or uh, going to a specific country, whatever your main, one of your main things you would like to accomplish in 2024, pop that in there. And then I've put, a, put three smaller goals that you would like to achieve that this year in 2024 and these are just so you can keep coming back and reminding yourself exactly what you're setting your sights on 
And then I've got here intentions and affirmations. For me, I'm going to put some more thought into this. I need to do a bit of meditation in the morning and think about what kind of direction or what values would I like to be guided by in 2024. And I think one of them particularly that I'm going to put in here now is the word endurance. And this is based off a quote I found by a Orthodox, Russian Orthodox teacher, um, which said that endurance can protect our hearts from despair. So I really, really liked that idea of instead of giving in to despair, instead we endure and hold on to hope. So I'm going to go through that by myself later again. And then here we've got our reading list, so book titles, specific book titles, and then learning points. So you can come back to this throughout the year with, I've only given you four options here. I think sometimes we can totally over-exaggerate, well, I can over-exaggerate how many books um, one can read in a year and really um, make the content as part of your internal world. So I've just put four there and then um, some of your learning points, the main learning points from that book. You can document that there. And then next we're going to, we've got the calendar for the whole year and this is just an, a dotted page so you can do some bullet journaling, bullet journaling of yourself. And then here we come to January. Um, on the first page of January you have a specific to-do list and then your notes. Um, so you can pop anything in there and then any key dates you want to put in here. So for me particularly I've got a band I'm seeing on the 14th. I need to book a ticket at the beginning of the week because I am potentially going abroad so I need to look into um, ticket costs and then something very specific I need to do is make sure I go for my asthma checkup and then I'll make that appointment here I'm going to give it I'll call them I'll contact them on the fourth so you can go through your January put everything out that's important dates into the calendar and then you can go into the monthly budget trackers so I find that staying on top of my finances doing it every month really really does keep me on target so you've got your specific box for income what savings you want to achieve then you've got monthly income so this is your overall income from different sources and you a bit of notes in there so if you're saving for anything particular or a quote or anything that you want for inspiration you've got a list of expenses and then any debt that you're paying off and that's just a nice way every month to take stock take inventory of where you are at with your finances and then every month as well we have got um, an inspirational quote uh, any mini adventure you want for January new things you want to try this month so any recipes new activities any places you want to go any cultures you want to explore and then I've put this one in here because I think it's really important that we make it an intention um, of specific people you want to connect with and make that time with that person really intentional. So not checking your phone, being really present, asking deep and meaningful questions, getting to know where they're at, how they're thinking, how they're feeling. And I think this is really, really important and it can really make a big impact on the quality of life. And if you haven't got many people or friends, sometimes I think we can also over-exaggerate how many people we should have in our lives. So just focus on those one, two or three people that are in your life already, family or 
friends or somebody that you've noticed that you want to reach out to. And then the classic gratitude. So as you know, gratitude has been proven to really increase your overall satisfaction in life. It's so important to set our eyes on things that we are grateful for. We can sometimes take pay too much attention to what we haven't yet got in our lives. So this is to remind us on all the good things that we do have to be thankful for. And then, so I'm going to go through this, fill it out for this month. And then we have the monthly habit tracker, which is, I think, one of my favorite pages, which I want to track. So I'm going to put in here my running, which I would like to run at least times three a week. So I'll track that and I'm also going to make sure I'm putting that in my Strava. And I find that's really helpful because it keeps me, if I know I'm sharing something, it's one of the things that kind of keeps me on track because obviously we, we love to share things as social people. And if I know that I'm going to go for a run and be able to share my progress on an app where friends will see it, then that kind of keeps me on track. So in January, I'm going to track my running and get into a habit with that. And then I will continue uh, pulling that out in my own time. I won't bore you with my own habits that I want to track this month, um, but I will go through it with you next month so that you, we, can, we can check up with each other and see how we've done with our habits. And then we go on to the next page and this is the theme for the month which we've gone through already and it's detaching from the outcomes and it's finding joy in letting go and embracing your journey. So that is the start of the journal and then we have, as we go through, you can see we've got weekly a weekly diary and I've left the dates out so you can pop the dates in yourself. I am actually thinking of doing a version where it hasn't got January, um, it hasn't got the actual month because I was thinking that if somebody wants to buy this journal and it's, you know, going into May, you know, then they, they haven't got... I mean, I guess they could use the journal for next year going into the next month, but um, I kind of want you to be able to fill in the month yourself. So I think that's going to be the next project. So I think I will actually add that to my list of things to do here. I'm going to create another book, another a simple planner without dates. Well, beautiful adventurer, that brings us to the end of this week's journey together. I invite you to like and subscribe. You can check all links in the description below. You can find the journal planner in the description below as well. And remember, it's never too late to take a step down the wild and beautiful path.